Hi, I'm Tim Berglund. This is Kafka Streams Transformations, Part 1. Now that we've introduced the concept of a stream and a table and defined those things, and we've introduced the KStream class and talked about the KStream table, let's actually look at some API code. Remember, that's the point here. You're not just pulling messages off a topic. You've got an abstraction over that topic, over that stream. You've got this KStream or KTable class, and you're going to do things to that stream. Things, for example, like filter and map. Now, in the last section, we created a stream called Play Events, and this was just a stream created from a topic. There was a topic with messages in it, now we've got a stream called Play Events. Well, we want to do some things with those events. For example, we don't care about play events in there that have less than a minimum duration. Like if somebody started playing a song and it only went for two seconds, we don't want to include that in the calculations we're doing here. That's a filtering operation. Now, filtering is an example of a stateless transformation. When you take a stream and you filter it, in effect, you have created a new stream. It's not like you've modified the old one. It's, it's still there, but you've created this new stream that only has the records in it that meet the filtering criteria. Criteria. So to get that done internally, the implementation of filter really just needs to consider each event uh, one at a time. It's not like it needs to accumulate any kind of state. Filtering is entirely stateless. So here, as you can see on line two, we're looking into each event and we're saying get the duration and if it's greater than or equal to the minimum chartable duration, we'll go ahead and let it pass into the new stream. So super simple there. You can see we're using a Java Lambda to provide that filtering logic. If you needed to pass in a method, that would be okay too. If your filtering logic wasn't a one-liner like this, and maybe it was a method of its own that called other methods and you wanted them to have tests and all of that, that's totally fine. Uh, here though, we're keeping these examples real simple and just using lambdas. It's not explicit here in this code, but that filter method is returning a new KStream instance. Another method that KStream has is map. And so you can see fluently, we're just calling map after calling filter, filter creates a new case stream. We're calling map on that case stream. Let's talk about what map does. So after we filtered out the play events that are too short, they're, they're less than our chartable duration, we're going to repartition the stream. So this stream, if you look at it, the key is a string. And apparently that string is a region code of some kind. Now the details of the application that don't matter here. Uh, what does matter is that's not a super useful key, right? You probably don't want to join based on region or anything like that. Uh, you might be more interested in a stream that's partitioned by song ID. Uh, that seems to make more sense. You could do that with the map method. Now what map does is it takes every event that impinges on the stream, every event in the stream, and passes it into the Lambda here that we're running. So you get to look at every single event and the return value of the Lambda is going to be the new key value pair for the resulting stream. So map takes a stream in and creates a new stream performing some arbitrary transformation on the key and the value of each element in the stream. Now this shows up in other kinds of computational frameworks, not just stream processing. Map is all over the place. It's certainly a popular thing in functional languages uh, to map over a collection, for example. So it's becoming a pretty common programming paradigm and it shows up in Kafka streams exactly as it should. So because we want to repartition this, we want to throw away the old key, we don't care about it at all, we're effectively creating a new key value pair. And we have this utility class called key value that you can see inside the Lambda, we are calling that. And we're making the new key be the song ID and the new value be, well, the same as the old value. The value is still that play event. We just want the key to be the ID of the song that's being played and not that rather more cumbersome region code. I'm not even sure where that came from. Seemed like a good idea at the time, but it's easy to fix. Of course, if somebody else in the system needs that region code and that stream is meaningful with that partitioning in place, that stream is still there. Other people can use it. Now we've created a new stream that's partitioned in the way we need. And if you're thinking ahead a little bit and thinking, hmm, you're repartitioning a stream, I wonder why you might be doing that. Well, you're on to me. Uh, we do want to join this stream to a table. And enriching stream data is a very common operation. We've got this series of events, and maybe there's a song ID, maybe there's a user ID, all kinds of 
IDs in there that aren't super useful, uh, we might have K tables lying around that we've created from other streams and we're able to join a stream and a table. Now, joining two things with a common key, if you've ever used a relational database before, uh, that's not gonna rock your world. This is a fairly comfortable concept. But joining a stream and a table is a little bit strange if you've never done it before. You might think, wow, how can I do that? Well, in fact, it's really not that hard at all. So if you can imagine this diagram here, my facts are, of course, that's my newly repartitioned stream of play events. And what would my dimensions be? Well, here, let's just imagine that we have a song table. I'm not gonna walk you through all the steps of how you might create that, but elsewhere in the system, there's gonna be a stream of, of song updates, and we're gonna materialize that into a K table, and we'll be able to join those two things, effectively enriching that play event data with the song data, creating an enriched stream. Now, as you use Kafka Streams and you build systems out with this API, you're gonna do this all the time. Joining is gonna become, hopefully, a second nature thing for you. So on line two of this listing, we're calling the left join method on plays by song ID. Now, plays by song ID is the repartition stream we just created a moment ago. So we're calling left join, we're passing four things into it. The first one is song table. Now this is kind of like the cooking show where I pull the partially cooked thing out of the oven and didn't show you how to do it because it's not important right now. Uh, this is that. Song table is a K table that I've created from a stream of song updates elsewhere. Uh, not showing you all the details of how these things work. What's important is we have a stream, we have a table, we want to join them. We call left join. The first thing we pass in is the name of the table we want to join to. And this will join on key. So when the key of plays by song ID, which is what? Again, that is the song ID, is the same as the key in song table, and of course that's gonna be song ID, that's fairly intuitive, uh, then we're gonna have a match. Now because this is a left join, we want to keep the play events even if somehow we don't find a song to look up. If somehow there's a problem with that reference data uh, and we can't find the song ID, that's fine. We wanna maintain the play event uh, in the resulting stream. Now the second parameter is a lambda, and this is where we're helping the join know what kind of thing to produce in the new stream. Uh, that's not a given. Now, let's take a step back and think about this for a moment. When you join two tables in a relational database, and let's say you're careless, which of course you never are, but, but let's say in a moment of weakness, you say select star, from a certain table and left joined on another table where there's a join condition and you go on your merry way. Well, what is the actual resulting object that you get from that? You're getting effectively a table that has all of the columns of the left table and the right table. Those are all available in that joint table. Now you can be more careful in the projection and limit that and a well-formed join query in SQL uh, will do so, but by default, you just get everything all glued together. Here in this Lambda, we're being explicit. We're saying, look, I know I have the left thing and the right thing, and what I want to produce in the resulting stream is the song. And of course, the third and fourth parameters are, again, the certies, the serializer, deserializer objects, just to help the API know what the types are. The key is gonna be a long, that's the song ID, and the value is the actual song. Now, next up, we'll look at stateful transformations, but a picture hopefully is taking shape in your head where you've got this library of things to do to streams, these high-level operations. You've already seen map and filter and join, and those are things you do to streams that result in other streams. Well, we might also reduce or aggregate. Those are some fairly general purpose methods that we can call on a stream that result in a table. And then we can perform various operations on tables and then those tables we can convert back to streams. So again, we see this stream table duality where you can convert one into another. And while you've got a stream, there are various stateful and stateless transformations that you can perform on it. While you've got a table, there are transformations you can perform on that. And so when you're thinking of the data in your business as a stream of events, which in reality, of course, it is, you've got access to this rich API that lets you treat events and streams as first-class citizens and do the kind of processing on those things that you're likely to need to do as you build your system.